Other than Ashley Babbitt, probably the most recognized face of January 6th at the Capitol is Jake Chansley, Jacob Angeli, uh, the QAnon shaman, uh, Jake the Viking guy with the with the big furry hat and the horns, all those names he goes by. Um, he's currently, I am told, in solitary confinement in jail, awaiting sentencing where he will be going to prison next month. Okay, uh, yesterday, his mom held a fundraiser for his legal bills for support for him uh, to help collect letters of support for him as he awaits sentencing. So what's the truth about him? People on the left and the right. Uh, there's a lot of people on the left and the right who think he's a bad guy. Is he a bad guy? Uh, we're going to actually take a look at something he wrote uh, from solitary confinement. Uh, we're going to look at, at his letter to his mom which was now publicly shared. Uh, and we are also going to look at some of what happened at the fundraiser yesterday. Get this, he actually had a call with his mom from jail. She puts the phone up to the microphone and you, you get to hear from Jake himself. So we're gonna get into all of that. But before we get into this segment, I wanna shout out the song sponsor for this segment, Keto with Ivory. A study shows uh, some shocking facts about weight loss. The CDC says 49% of adults in the U.S. are obese. 56% of women have tried to lose weight, while 41% of men try to lose weight. How can half the country struggle with weight? That is because the usual advice for weight loss doesn't work. The secret is keto with ivory. This powder helps uh, lose weight quicker. Uh, it works just like the keto diet would. Routinely taking a few scoops helps to melt fat, tone muscle, and reduce cravings. I highly recommend recommend Keto with Ivory. Try it today for 51% off by going to ketowithivory.com. That is ketowithivory.com. Link in description. All right, let me share the screen and show you what Jake wrote from solitary confinement. Uh, here's one of the letters right here. Uh, I want to just show you the envelope. I blurred out his, his mom's address, but here you can see he wrote uh, from the address, which is, I guess, the Alexandria Detention Center. Um, on the outskirts of Washington, D.C., where he is has been jailed uh, since January. Um, and he wrote this to his mom on, on August 25th. Uh, so I was at the fundraiser yesterday, and one of Jake's good friends shared, shared this uh, with me. I took photos of everything that Jake wrote from jail. Um, it was a pile of poems that he sent to his mom. So let's read some of them. Prayers said and answered. I feel torn inside by dueling points of view. Should I stand or hide? Am I of the chosen few stuck between faith and fear, hope and despair? God, please make it clear that you hear and care. Show me the right path and God light my way. Show your enemies wrath and your children better days. I want to believe. I truly want to let go. What way will you weave my life? I don't know. Every day is an ordeal and a trust is so hard. Lord, help my heart here. It is so heavily scarred. I've been through so much and it is so hard to trust, but God is, is my, um, uh, I'm not crutch. God is my crutch. He made me from dust. God heard my prayer for a miracle was needed. The Lord saved me from despair and the enemies defeated. The evidence is clear. The proof is all around. I need not have fear for God is abound. Your ways are higher. They are not mine. You walked me through fire and turned water to wine. A poem Jake wrote from jail awaiting sentencing for entering the Capitol on January 6th. All right, let me read you another one here. Let's finish this thing, please. God, I don't mean to complain, but my heart is heavy. I know prayer is not in vain, but my heart is ready to see your promise fulfilled. As you said it would be, I've tried to remain still as you would like to see. You've already come through uh, in so many ways. Could it be true ahead are better days? I don't mean to doubt or have false suspicions, but I am without one thing from my vision. I know it'll take time, 
to come to fruition. You've given me signs to rise above the attrition. But so much time waiting has caused me to wonder. My faith is fading during this time asunder. I want to believe the best wine is for last. And I want, I want to leave dark times in the past. I am thankful for your winks and nods. But what is the score and what are the odds? You can do all things, I truly believe. Please help me grow wings so that I can leave this terrible place, this purgatory prison. So let's finish this race like a rainbow from a prison. Uh, some of Jake's letters from jail um, as he awaits sentencing, November 17th. Now, uh, a lot of the people on the right wing, so many conspiracy theories uh, or just theories abounded immediately after he was photographed at the Capitol in that getup with the face paint and the horns. Um, and, um, you know, some people thought he was an Antifa plant. And there was actually a, a pretty interesting, enlightening three hour podcast interview that he had January 7th on the ride back home to Arizona from Washington, DC, in between calls with the FBI, uh, which one of one of the guys that Jake rode home from DC with, shared with me showed me some of the video of Jake in that car talking to the FBI, didn't even have an attorney yet, but said, look, I'm innocent. I was peaceful in there. I was calling for peace in there in the Capitol. So I have nothing to hide. So I'll gladly talk to the FBI. So he was having, he had two phone calls with the FBI. January 7th is what I've gathered. And in between those calls, he joined a three hour podcast where he talked all about all about his views on, on America, on, on what's really going on with this craziness we've seen since 2020 and, and before. Uh, I'm linking that podcast in the description of this video. Uh, if you guys really want to know what the truth about Jake, um, I think that that podcast shed some light on that. And um, I think he comes on the line at, at the nine minute mark, if you want to hear what he had to what he had to say the day after going into the Capitol and being so photographed, probably because of his getup, which made him just the face of January 6th, which appears to have really backfired on his freedom. Um, that, that Saturday, he was arrested in Arizona by the FBI and has been jailed ever since. Uh, he was, he, any release has been denied, um, a request to at least be released to see his dying grandfather, who was his father figure, uh, this fall was denied. So he lost his grandpa without being able to say goodbye as he stayed in jail, but he has been able to talk to his mom every day on the phone. She tells me, um, so she says it's called solitary confinement, but he's able to have phone calls every day, which does not make solitary confinement so bad. I actually want to show you um, his mom, Martha, Martha Angeli Chansley on stage yesterday at the fundraiser for him as mounting legal bills are, are kind of overwhelming her. So this fundraiser was to help with that and support him. Um, so here's uh, actually this was posted by Jake's sister. Yesterday, um, his mom on stage, uh, she gets Jake on the line from jail and he says something to the audience there at the fundraiser. Let's take a listen. His mom, Martha, who you just saw on stage there, she told me about this website, um, which actually has information about that fundraiser that was yesterday, but uh, freetheshaman.com. Uh, she says Google actually blocks this website, but you can find it through other search engines. And 
if you scroll down here, the requesting of letters of support, um, the attorney for Jake Al Watkins is actually collecting letters to present to the judge. Uh, we are requesting letters of support for Jacob, the shaman Shansley to be sent to Honorable Royce Lamberth. Uh, so you would email or you would mail these letters to Al Watkins in Missouri, his law firm, and then he'll be sending them to the judge handling Jake's case. It says here the support letters will be filed under seal for viewing solely by the judge. We're still hoping the shaman will be able to make St. Louis his home. Now, this is something that some of, some of the people who know Jake talked to, to me about yesterday. They thought it was very strange that Jake's lawyer wants Jake to get out of jail and live in Missouri with him, you know, in close proximity to Jake's lawyer. Why? This is a lawyer that I guess presented himself to the family after Jake was arrested and say, hey, I want to represent you, which, you know, a lot of lawyers try to jump on high profile cases. Well, Al was successful to get that high profile case. And now he's trying to get Jake, Jake out of jail, not to go back to Arizona to be with his family and his mom, but to go to Missouri <laughs> where attorney Al Watkins lives. Um, Al Watkins has been all over the media with this, sending out press releases. Um, hopefully he really does have Jake's best interests, uh, but some people are questioning whether he does. And we're going to get into, we're going to get into a lot of this in a special report that I'm compiling, where you're going to hear my interview with Jake's mom, Martha, and my interview with Jake's good friend and journalist who he rode to and from DC with who was there next to Jake in the car as Jake was talking on the phone with the FBI, uh, what, two days before being arrested. Um, and we're really going to get into who Jake really is, a highly misunderstood person from what I can tell. He's a red-blooded American who loves his country very much, but he has different views than a lot of people. Some of his spirituality weirds people out. But here's the thing, there are people all across America with, diff with cultural differences who have one thing in common. They love liberty. They love individual liberty, the freedom to live your life exactly as you see fit, so long as it doesn't interfere with the next person's ability to do the same. And um, people who love our constitution. And from what I have gathered so far, that really seems to be Jake, despite all the crazy conspiracy theories and rumors about him being a part of a TIFA. In fact, go check out my last YouTube video uh, regarding the number one hit song in America right now. Let's go, Brandon. I, I interviewed the author of that song yesterday as, after he performed the song live at Jake's fundraiser and talked to him about Jake and, and his feelings about Jake and why he wanted to support Jake and how he actually met Jake and Jake knew his patriotic lyrics by heart. And he was saying, look, no Antifa person is going to bump into me on the street, recognize me and recite my lyrics by heart to me. So he's like, no way is Jake part of Antifa. Anyway, that's Jake. Um, he just one of the January 6th, protesters rotting jail right now. You know, the reason I'm zoning in on Jake's story is because I learned that Jake's story is, is highly censored actually um, in the media and in social media. And after leaving Fox, where I was dealing with, with the censored press and, and certain things I wasn't supposed to let the public know for some strange reason, I, I ditched that in favor of honesty and transparency. And my goal was some of the top stories that I want to zone in on is to just to shed light on what the media is suppressing. And by chance, a few months ago, I realized that the media is suppressing some key videos from January 6th that show especially Jake um, collaborating with police in inside the Capitol, calling for peace inside the Capitol. And um, in fact, this beautiful prayer that he made inside the chamber has been highly suppressed. This is the sort of stuff that gets deleted right off of YouTube right away. So my final report may have to upload on BitChute. I'll link my BitChute in the description as well. And um, 
stay tuned for my continuing coverage on this. Interesting times. You guys want to hear one more letter from Jake before we wrap this up? Um, so many letters here. Uh, here we go. Woe unto them, it says. A uh, letter written from Jake in solitary confinement in Alexandria, Virginia, uh, in the past few months as he awaits sentencing in November. Here's what he wrote. Woe unto them. The wicked fear death because they cling to their body. With their every breath, self-indulgence is their folly. They value glitter glittering gold more than their own eternal soul short-sighted they are bold but fearful when hub hubris takes its toll profiting from lies their weapons is forked tongue living they are despised in dying uh, no songs are sung where darkness hides god's light will eventually shine with the changing tides, God says, vengeance is mine. Seeking only wealth and power, they ignored life's golden rule. Standing before God, they cower, knowing they were the devil's tool. Hard is the way and narrow the path that leads to eternal salvation. But to experience God's wrath, just indulge the devil's temptation. So woe unto them who call God evil and ev uh, good evil and evil good. Hey, that's the left's tactics. Well, unto them who call good evil and evil good, for their actions stem from the devil's weak and rotting wood. They shall be the first to burn in God's cleansing fire. No fate could be worse for those with an evil desire. What we do in our life will echo in the world forever. Will you choose corruption and strife or to make other li others' lives better? No, it's never too late to choose the righteous road. We all make our own fate based on our moral code. In God's eternal view, there is no greater test for the self-selected few are either the worst or the best. So what will you choose? God's path or that of, of the devil? You have eternity to lose. So keep your actions on the level. Stay tuned. Much more to come on the true story of Jake Chansley and the other January 6th protesters.